Hey Studio Art Class, uh, it's been so beautiful out lately, I thought it might be a good idea to get out and do some outdoor plein air painting. I know you guys might not have painting supplies at home, so I'm going to also teach how to do some thumbnail sketches in charcoal. These are just a few views that I saw when I walked down to the beach uh, earlier today, so I thought we would go over. I decided to go with this one just because I thought it better applied to what we've already covered in class as far as theory of planes. So let's set up and do some thumbnails. Even when my ultimate goal is to do a painting, I still like to travel with this little sketchbook and just a piece of charcoal. You can see it's just a piece of willow charcoal like we use in class. And the purpose of these thumbnails isn't to get anything beautiful. Um, it's really just to kind of experiment with different compositions and do a dry run, kind of create a little road map before I start on more of a long process painting. Um, so I'm just doing some really quick studies. I tried to do one in a vertical format here. Trying to think about some of the compositional things we talked about, like the rule of thirds. You can say I lined up the horizon line on the bottom third, and then that telephone or power line I have on the vertical first third there as well. And you can see I'm using a tan notebook, but you don't need to use that. You can also just use any white paper you have around and a pencils or this piece of willow charcoal. I'm just using the tan paper because you'll see later I paint on the linen, which has the similar tone, so I just find it really helpful to start with that mid-tone ground, but not necessary at all. The other thing I'm doing is just simplifying, simplifying everything down into, you can see I've only used about two values so far, and then this white is kind of a third value. So I'm grouping, I'm not looking at any of the variation in the trees, um, or even like the water so much, just going for the big value patterns of the horizon with the landscape there and then the reflection are all kind of lumped together the dark uh, upward planes of the telephone or power pole and then the really bright kind of solar glare coming from the sun and then the atmospheric perspective and some of the reflection on the water so these aren't supposed to be pretty neat or you know terribly accurate um, or like highly rendered just more big statements to help you kind of plan out your composition you're really looking for Kind of where's your focal point going to be? You can see I just kind of um, accented probably brighter than it actually is right in that V shape of the horizon just because that's kind of want my to be my secondary read or focal point um, to the telephone or power pole. So I'm going to take the exact same view, but I'm going to turn it horizontal um, or landscape view. And I'm going to try the same thing again, starting with the horizon first, and I'm still going to use that kind of rule of thirds laying on the bottom, rule of thirds, and the telephone again, our power line, again falls on the first vertical third there. I just think that's an easy, kind of, it was well suited for this. That's not always the case, but it's kind of a surefire way to get a composition going. Um, and then, again, you can see just laying in some of the big shapes, nothing too perfect or neat. You can see with this view, you can get a little bit more of the pier or that little pylon there in the front, which I thought was kind of a nice foreground element. A lot of this stuff was in the vertical orientation was a lot further away from me, so I thought that would be nice to have a little bit foreground. The power pole can be the mid-ground, and then the far distance or background would be the far tree line. So I think it just added a little bit more depth to it, but overall, a lot of this is very similar. And that's why we don't want to spend too much time on these, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes at the max, um, just working out. And then you get you can approach your paintings with a lot more confidence. You've kind of worked out, you know, the strategy. You're going to put it down, details you want to leave out, what's working, what's not. I'm probably not going to, in this thumbnail, put in that tree or the limbs you see there creeping in from the right. Um, I just find them kind of distracting and too much detail then on the left side. So if we edit all that out, there's just enough that we have the foreground and then kind of the secondary focal point is that power line. And then you kind of third, we can push with a little bit of value focus on that V where the power lines are actually receding back into space. And it kind of a ni nice leading lines there coming from the left corner to that third on the power pole and then down to that V. And in the photo, I took the photo later in the painting section, uh, but when I was looking at this, the 
sun was actually out of frame. So it wasn't, it kind of has moved into the frame by the time I took this picture. So that's why you don't see me drawing it in there. Um, but you can definitely get the sense of where the light's coming from in the picture because I'm pushing a lot more hard with the ch white chalk on that left side. And then it, there's this nice gradient moving from the kind of middle left up towards that right corner where it has that nice, they call that the zenith of the sky, gets a little bit darker. You have, you have that rising off like the atmospheric perspective moving up towards the top of the painting and then the solar glare moving from the left to the right side. So all things to be thinking about as you're kind of putting in these little simplified value patterns. And then once you've done a few studies, one last thing I want to uh, really emphasize is these are little roadmaps. So you want to make sure they're kind of, even though simplified, accurate to your overall painting so the ratio is the same. It's a three by four. This is three inches by four inches, um, which is the same ratio as my painting, which is nine by 12. So the overall ratio. So I'm going to set up for my actual painting session. And you can see the tone of the canvas is that kind of brown. So that's why I wasn't using white paper. If I was using a white canvas, kind of a standard canvas, it would probably be beneficial to use a white notebook. Same way, I've kind of, I'm kind of moving pretty quickly now. Same, same with the willow charcoal, just laying in a nice linear sketch. Um, you don't have to do this. You can jump right in with kind of thin down paint if you want to do that. But I thought just to have kind of the fundamentals secure, show you guys one last time. This is a great way to start. And then even before I put, start putting down thicker paint, I'm kind of going to start with a monochromatic sketch. And I'm using brown paint, thin, um, thin down with water. You can see the water can down there. Uh, just to help kind of, I'm going to be painting in monochrome today, black and white. But I wanted to show you, like, if I was using color, I would start with this underpainting stage. That way I've got the drawing and values all worked out before I dump, jump into color. Once you're happy with that, then you can start going in with thicker paint. I'm going to mix up a value range of one to five values. So you can see I'm grabbing for my white and kind of have a blue black up there. It's called Payne's Gray. It's just a lot colder version of a black. I thought it would be a really nice temperature complement to the warmth of the canvas and that underpainting color I use. Just have a nice cool effect, but still in effect a black and white kind of painting or monochrome painting. So I started with my horizon line and you know it's up to you where you want to start and now I kind of grab onto what I'm most confident with what can I um, easily put down so either the horizon line or that pier and the power pole seem to be the darkest shapes. I'm thinking back to what we discussed as far as kind of the um, Carlson's theory of angles and planes in landscape painting. It's part of the reason I chose this setup in particular is because it was a good example of that. I think the view to the right I showed earlier in the video might have been a little bit more interesting as far as focal points, but this one offered a really good example of where that those theories of angles come into play. And remember that saying that the sky, because that's the light source, is the lightest on your canvas. It's providing the light. It's going to be reflecting down, hitting the horizon, or the, I'm sorry, the horizontal plane, the ground. So that's going to be your second lightest. And then as things angle up and it's like towards straight vertical, such as the pier and the power pole, those get the darkest. But anything in between that, say like a hillside mountain or the tree line, are kind of going to be a third value in between the ground plane and those completely vertical. So those kind of just give you a little bit of landmarks to base your value judgments on, but then it comes down to observation. But it makes a little bit more logical progression. That paired with what we talked about earlier with the kind of knowing where your light source is coming from, the sun and that solar glare moving from the left to the right side of the sky in my canvas, and then the atmospheric perspective moving from the horizon up towards the top of the canvas is going to also be a gradation. And you can see I mixed up the, the piles of the values just to keep a nice control of them and I marked the top of like that where I was aiming for with the darkness of the sky and then the lightness and I kind of linked them together in like a little value step. In effect bracketing that sky instead of just blending it getting kind of a mess. And at this point the painting's not too much further than the thumbnail was. 
But now that I've got the big masses kind of simplified value structure blocked in, I can go in with my deep darks and a little bit smaller brush, and I can kind of push the horizon line, maybe add some details to that power pole and that foremost pylon, because that's going to be the thing closest to our view. So it's going to be the darkest and most detailed. Fancy term for that is repoussoir, which is a French term or picture device. I think it means to push back or pushing back and it just helps lead the viewer's eye in from you know the foreground and then into a more kind of vast depth of the painting. So just like I went in and pushed the deep darks I can do the same thing with the lights now going a little bit thicker. Um, again you know lighting up that ground plane because it is the second brightest so it it wants to be brighter than what's around it but not over bright or brighter than the sky. And you can see kind of now this is all the small minute stuff really um i've put the shapes down i've kind of got the general big values and i'm just looking at kind of edge quality now so softening kind of that distant tree line i went in and softened um, sharpening some of the accents or details up on the top of that power line where there's a nice contrast between a lot of those details up there and the lightness of the sky and then Oh, now I've got the palette knife. So that's just a great way to apply a lot more paint uh, without pulling up paint. So as you work into a painting, you're putting down more and more paint. So you have to, um, to get it to stay without disturbing the under layers, you have to go thicker with your paint. So you, either painting with the side of your brush like that or a palette knife is really the only way to do that. So I put the clouds on probably a little bit brighter than they are. Um, the trick with clouds, and same thing with these power lines, is I'm going to go back in once I've got the paint on there and kind of soften. So you'll see me push these back into kind of the atmosphere a little bit with the power lines, and then same thing with the clouds. Go back in and soften those up. Um, not always the case, but generally you want to keep the edges fairly soft, especially on the bottom of the clouds, and then look for the contrast of the sharper edges towards the top. That's really all this is, is taking that thumbnail sketch we did. So spend your time on those thumbnail sketches, and then you're just pushing this like small little cherry on top details, uh, little variations in those value patterns, but it's really holding and planning and composing. Those are the, the big important parts of any composition, and that's where you can really get your mileage and learn a lot is from those thumbnails. And now just a lot more cleaning, cleaning, cleaning up all the kind of Small details, probably adding a little bit more texture down in there in that foreground element. Uh, and last thing to do is sign it, peel off the tape, and then you got yourself a finished little plein air sketch or outdoor painting.